Hello, Ingrid. Hello. <laughs> I'll go first. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. And um, thank you very much for joining us today. Oh, absolute pleasure. Thank you for having me. It's an honour. <laughs> I need your energy today as well. I've been a little bit, I've just had a coffee to pick myself up. So I'm sure your energy will uh, come at me as well. <laughs> Expressions um, not bad. They're not bad. Are they not? They sound <laughs> like, a good they're one. They're not bad. They're meant to be very good for headaches, actually. If you take, if you sort of have a shot of an espresso for if ever you have a headache or brain fog, espresso, um, a sniff of rosemary, lavender, very good. For I've got clarity. the coffee. I've got some rosemary in the garden. I'll I'll go out and have a, <laughs> have a sniff in a minute. <laughs> I know I've got a big bush in the garden and every now and again I'm like, oh, I need to have a really good like whiff of that and stick my head in the bush. <laughs> well, she says, very Billie Eilish, if you've seen what she said this week. Right. Um, <laughs> so let's start. So we we have been working together just very recently. So we're still mid-process. Um so I thought it'd be really interesting to get you on because I'm loving your story, your energy and how you're doing it all. So let's start at the beginning. Let's start with what got you on your own path. Uh, when I was younger, I used to watch my mum paint her nails and she used to take time out sit and paint her nails. She used to take all the time in the world. She used to breathe easy through it. And when she finished, she was a different person, Penny. She had so much confidence. And I used to watch this at seven, eight, nine years of age. And uh, every time she would just, you know, just have so much confidence and be a different lady. And when I got to about 13, that was it then. I was like, right, I want to do something that makes people more confident. Um, and I went up to my dad and I said, right, dad, I want to do beauty. <laughs> he was like what um but I stuck by it and um and that was it then and you have you did some early years like the Knightsbridge City Spa World Clinic prior to that didn't you I did um so I started out really in central London you know all through my training and then obviously places I was working at whilst I was still training and the, one of the most solid jobs I had after I worked in Islington actually but then after that I worked towards um Belgravia Knightsbridge and later down the line in various other places but yeah Belgravia Knightsbridge predominantly and was that doing more let's say generalist beauty yes I started out doing general beauty all aspects of beauty everything you can imagine um I actually specialized in particular gel nail brand called Biosculpture Gel. I was like the first to do it in two boroughs in North London. Um, so everything, you know, and I, I didn't really have, I didn't have a niche penny. Like Not then, just, not then. No, no, I didn't. And I was sort of doing bits of everything because that's what the clinics and the salons required me to do. But also I didn't really know what I loved best. I kind of loved it all. I was still in the realms of, oh my God, I love all of this, you know, all like a bit of nail art and, you know, like you know just exploring and that was the way to learn and where did the love of skin where did that first show up like what was what was a moment or some realization points that one skin was for you and two you needed to do it yourself <laughs> or on your your own practice um so in regards to skin, it was an interesting one. I actually worked before Knightsbridge. I worked in Islington and um, we were very busy with Dermalogica. It was a huge brand at the time and that was the brand that the clinic held. And um, we were doing Dermalogica facial treatments and the lady who ran the clinic um, had a very specific way of carrying out extractions and she was very big on extractions, etc. And she taught me, I was really young, I was like, 18, 19, can you believe I still have clients from that clinic? <laughs> like, yes. coming to me now. <laughs> <laughs> I can. <laughs> Find someone good and you keep them. Yeah, I mean, amazing. I feel so privileged. But um, so I started to do a lot of extractions. I, I learned and I started to do a lot of extractions. People started to visit me with quite 
prolific um, acne, comedogenic acne, quite congested skin. And I just fell into just doing a lot of extractions. And I realized these people were coming back and their skin was getting better. And what I loved about it was the fact that every time I treated them, it was really unique because every time the skin was portraying something different. So I needed to treat it in accordance. You know, whereas if I was doing a manicure on some, or something, I loved it, but the sequence was relatively the same, you know, to get to the end result of beautiful, beautiful nails. So I really liked the idea that each person was unique and this was a journey and it was just really fun. And actually, I left and I went on to other salons, but, but, but I had so many clients who I was already carrying out treatments for skin on and various other beauty treatments that they sort of asked me at that point, I was only like 19 penny, like they asked me, um, where are you going and so forth and you know could we still visit you so I actually opened before I went to Knightsbridge I opened my first sort of space and started working for myself and then working for other people just trying to see how that would work and seeing my regular clients and you know it was hard because I couldn't afford a massive product range there was no way and I wanted to expand my knowledge I couldn't afford everything so I used to take trips really far to Dermalogica training ground where we could buy professional sized products if we were attending a training day and I would go multiple times in the month over a period of months to build up a big enough collection of skincare to treat people and that was the only way I could afford it (laughs) Um, because I didn't want to let these clients down doing the extractions and making sure I'm maintaining their skin Um, and then when I went to Knightsbridge um, again we predominantly specialized in skin anyway so I started to learn more and more and and I just always loved it I just always loved it um but every place that I worked always had they had a treatment menu that the client could choose what they wanted and I could never understand it because how does a client know what they need and um and one day, uh, you know, my manager was lurking around me and I saw to a client and she had booked a particular treatment and I did a different treatment and charged her for a different treatment because that was what she needed. And she was very grateful that I told her what she needed and provided her with what she needed. But my manager was not happy with me. And she said, oh, you have to do what, what, what she booked in for. And oh, I was like, why, you know? doesn't make any sense it's not logical it's not common sense like her skin's portraying me things like she needs this and you're telling me to do this because she picked this but she doesn't know and she's coming to us as professionals oh it drove me in <laughs> um, and I just thought I can't do this I can't do this because this is not helping people um yeah oh it's hel- it's helping people in in a different way it's 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 like a luxury top up service or whatever whereas I think you were starting to go a bit deeper yes um I realized that skin changes um in accordance to what's happening within and externally and I learned that because of how it fluctuates um you need to treat it on that day, knowing the history, but also what it's portraying that day. It's a communication organ. So you have to try and decipher what's It's this organ thing. I was like, that, that, that's like, I've never thought about it like that before. Yes. Yes. And it's the largest living organ we have. And how much does it tell you, like, when you see somebody's face do they do they can you see stuff straight off or or is it more in discussions with people I think because now I've been doing this about 16 years and I've seen uh, thousands of faces um there are certain things that are more obvious to me just to be the trained eye and experience um but I don't bank only on that I need to know really detailed history. This is why consultation is so imperative and so important Yeah. because we are made up of four bodies, I believe, you know, emotional, spiritual, physical, and mental. And those four bodies will correlate and communicate with one another. And skin is always an external manifestation of internal disorders. 
So as much as I can assess with my eyes, with my hands, with all my five senses to a degree um, externally, I still need to know more information to find out actually the internal factors that could be contributing to what I'm seeing on that day. Because as well, it's like we were saying, it's you've gone from all beauty treatments to skin and now it's in particular acne and the other one that I can never say. <laughs> Rosacea. <laughs> Rosacea. Easy, now you say it. Um, and it's interesting because you'd think that narrowing that down, it gets more repetitive. But actually it's the opposite in terms of doing a doing a, a standard beauty treatment is pretty much the same steps over and over whereas when you're going super focused on those areas and on and on what the client's coming with that there's just so much more variety and expertise and knowledge there yes yes and the elementology do you yes. want to tell us a bit about that? Because this is another, so we've got the what, but then this is even like progressions where you're going that's niching down even more on the how. Yes. So for me, through the years of treating skin, um, you know, I've obviously realized through the years how much the skin manifests externally, what's happening internally. But actually through my own learning of myself, um, and certain studies and exploring and reading and years and years of actually studying and learning and putting it into material practice. That's the difference is putting it into the material plane, and putting it into material practice every day that I've come to realize that actually the fundamentals of everything in this world are the element, you know, are made up of the elements and we are too. And so therefore this concept of air, fire, water, earth, translating to those four bodies I mentioned earlier, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, is imperative to understand as best we can and actually have what we call elementology equilibrium with. And it's not possible for as long as we're in human form for every day to be in complete equilibrium. Like it's not possible, <laughs> but we can try our best to be. And the more that we can be, the more that will manifest in different ways, including a skin that's less inflamed, that's brighter, uh, has more luminosity. Um, you can see how the vitality literally just shines out of your, out of your skin. Um, and so I'm a big advocate of this because I myself, it's something that I try and practice myself. Again, don't manage it every day. <laughs> don't even know. But um, no, I don't. But it's awareness is the key to change. So I feel like I'm a guide. I've, I've actually honed in on what I've learned from personal experience, translated it and adapted it into my clinic of how I can help others on their journey to better skin health. And actually, the, the, from coming from beauty to skin was years and years and years. It took like 10 years. Easy. Yeah, I think that's interesting. Yeah, like literally 10 years. And actually, then it took a further, probably only the last year or two to realize, hold on. I've still got my comedogenic, acneic skin clients who are coming to me. And actually, out of all my clientele, that's predominantly who I treat and who trust me and who I get amazing results with, although we treat a variety of skin conditions. Um, and that really what, what was what honed in on my niche. And actually, it, I didn't even realize how niche I could get until someone actually said to me, oh, but what do you love the most? And I never stopped to think about it. And I said, oh, but, I, but what I love the most is I love helping people. And they said, yeah, but what what kind of conditions? You know, like unpack it, right, basically. Yeah, yeah, and when yeah. I started to unpack it, I thought, actually, what gives me the my soul the most satisfaction is when people walk in and say, I can't walk out without makeup. And then six months down the line, they're like, I'm walking around with no makeup. <laughs> And I'm like, that is soul satisfaction. So actually for me, finding my niche was finding myself. And by finding myself, what I needed to implement to do that and find my own uniqueness, then translated into how can I hone in on this uniqueness 
make it my niche in the way that I do it and encapsulate it and help others. And that gives me soul satisfaction. Well, and you say soul deep, not just skin deep. I love that. But it's it is this thing of I, I come back to when we say niche starts with you, and that mm. I was having a conversation with someone earlier today, where we just don't ask ourselves that question often enough. But what do you want? So they might be going through like, oh well, I can do this and this and this and this. It's like, yes, but what do you want? And what do you love to do? And if what do you want to do more of? Yeah. So that was a great, whoever asked you that was a great question. (laughs) (laughs) It was. And what I've realized, you know, even in treating skin, um, every single person is unique. So I believe every skin needs to be treated uniquely. But actually, I've, I've actually, even in working with yourself, Penny, what I've realized is by understanding my own uniqueness and accepting it, and actually realizing I am unique because that took me many years. I thought I was just boring and I didn't really have anything unique and I didn't have anything unique to offer. And actually being, <laughs> but being able to actually recognize, okay, actually I'm unique and maybe there's something I can do that nobody else can do the same that actually would be beneficial for others. And that was when I really stopped and thought, well, what is that then? Because I don't really know what it is. So I needed to well, go within often, myself. And often we don't see it because it comes so naturally to us. Like, it's the obvious thing. But it's it's so who we are that we don't even see it as the special thing, no. as the unique part. Yeah, I think part of it is I drive people mad, Penny. I mean, I won't, I won't kid myself, right? That's part of my unique... <laughs> <laughs> you know, <isn't> <laughs> <laughs> but you know, we can call it unique. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the whole thing of like when you were with that manager, and for them it was just we're here to provide a ser- like the 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 idea of service provision was so different. Theirs was like there's a menu and you just serve them what they want. And yours is like, I have a toolkit and I'll give them what they need. Yes. And to you, it's the most obvious thing in the world, but there'll be a, that'll happen so rarely. Like most people will be there to do the beauty treatments and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But it was something in you that was like, no, you could feel it then, even though you didn't have it all answered out. And like you say, it took 10 years plus. There was something in you that was like, I have a different reason for doing this. Yeah. I need to feel something different from this. So we had this conversation before with Dave early on, and it was like when I had a thing about, I love what I do, but I need to change who I'm doing it for and why mm-hmm. and with, because it needed to, it needed to matter. Yeah. And I get that sense with this as well. And it's, it's not that standard beauty stuff don't matter. I love I love it all. Oh no, definitely. definitely. <laughs> love it 100%. all. But there's but it's more like healing the work that yes. you're doing. Yes. And I loved that I started doing what my dream was, which was making people feel more confident. Even when I painted their nails, I, I could see that sort of what I remember from my mum, you know, like they felt so much better when they left. And I loved that. But actually I realized that. I had a niche that could help people in need with their skin. And, but it took, but what I've realized through the years is just like I say to my clients now, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day. So when they expect like, you know, clear skin and so forth, they think like a product's going to manage it to do it in with X amount of weeks. That's really short. Just like I say to them, Rome wasn't built in a day. So give your skin, you know, give yourself patience, you know, Uh, um, I, realize only now how much time and patience I needed with myself to recognize my own uniqueness, individualize it and present it. Yeah. And you, you, you've only taught that when you go through life and experience life, <laughs> that you realize that it is common sense, but 
it, at the same time, it's just, you, sometimes I have to stop and remind myself what I tell my own clients that Rome wasn't <laughs> built in a day, <laughs> you know? Yeah, and it is it is the it is the learning as you go and the trying lots of different things and then seeing what feels right. And then as you've done yourself, where you have then instigated what extra you learn from that and how deep you go from that. So you sort of get a little signal, okay, this this is feeling off, this is feeling right, it's like hot and cold or yeah. getting warmer, getting warmer. And then you've you've really dived into it. So the recent thing of the elementology and also a brand that you're starting, the Skin Wisdom, can I say that? Mm -hmm. Is it secret? Yeah. Um, skin the wisdom. Skin Wisdom brand, which is the bit that we're working on, um, to bring even more of that uniqueness, as you say, to it. Yes. How, how are you... How are you feeling with that? So how long has that been in the in the pipeline, the skin wisdom? Oh, in the developing gosh, like embers? Nearly four years. Nearly four years. Um and it started again thinking to myself, how can I bring even more um variety to you know to my clients to help them? And um, but from your way of doing things as well, like I like that the goal is, you know, that people get taught this way as well. Like that's yes. what I love. Eve. He's taking it from, no, I need to make my own thing, and then also developing that so that more people can. For me, it's all about empowering people by education. It's about educating people. I always say to my clients when they come in the clinic, the name of the game is not to see my ugly mug every week. Not, I mean, no, I don't even want to see it like every week. Um, it's That's not the name of the game. The name of the game is so that I educate them about their unique skin so that literally they will never be bullshitted again because they know <laughs> enough about their own skin. For me, yes. once I've done that, I've done my job. I've done my job. And, you know, sometimes years later, there's people who will say, I remember when you said blah, blah, blah. And I go, oh, my God, did I say it like that? Like, honestly, my big thing is if something's really crap, I say it's like shit in a bottle. And I literally say it like that. And they were like, do you remember when I came in with that cleanser and you said it was shit in a bottle? And I was like, oh, my days. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like me. Um, but, you know, at least they'll never use that cleanser again in the sense that they know. And I'll explain my reasons why. And they're really good reasons why. Um, but. It's it's really about um, educate you know empowering people by education education about their unique skin and the recognition that every single person is unique and uniqueness should be celebrated and um, and that's what I try to do you know and I think you know Penny as well in all of this like even with skin wisdom elementology like everything that I try to implement in the clinic and to, in order to help people I think my biggest lessons overall is failure. How so? Well, you know, when I was actually, how I really got started was I, you know, when I actually started, I was doing in two boroughs, I was the only person doing a particular gel brand called Biosculpture. That's how I started very, very small, actually, really. And um, obviously wanting to do things my way and all the rest of it, all of it coupled in one. But I remember I sort of said to my auntie, I was really proud of this tiny little setup I had. And I remember saying to my auntie, what do you think? And she said to me, oh, it's really nice. It'll be a nice little hobby for you. And I went, fuck that. <laughs> it was like, fuck that. I'm going to make this a business. And of course, as time progressed and I had this scenario with my old manager, you know, where I couldn't do what I needed. That was it then. I literally went, fuck it. <laughs> All um, the fires are lit. Totally. And throughout the years, all of those, all of those pushbacks, all of those failures, things that I tried to launch that didn't work, all of it just steered me into a different direction. That is where I am now and enabled me to stop and question my purpose. And actually, the way I've honed down on my niche is to question what my purpose is. And trying to decipher that. And I do believe that if you are 
doing something purposeful, it speaks to your soul where you just keep doing it. It doesn't feel like work. Like I can work 12 hours of the day and I'm still smiling. It's like like doing something that matters makes all the difference. Totally. But I do like that about the failures because we are talking about how people are going on their own path. And I think that's a part of it. And I think it's a good one to recognize that it's just part of it to get to yeah. say, is it the this, this crappy saying, but like you can't make an omelet without breaking eggs. Like you've just got to try, <laughs> you've got to try a few things yeah. and keep, yeah, they keep steering forward. But that's interesting about with the failure and, and not being scared of it or not be put off by it. It's like just... Just a little bump in the road, and then you keep it going. And if it's you're if you've got even lesson. more absolute drive about what you're doing, then that that totally helps. Mm. But that's it's interesting. It's the greatest lesson. Yeah, yeah. I really think it is. And 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 I try and say to my clients as well when they have setbacks. You know, their skin's going really well, and then they break out all of a sudden. It's like, why, why, why? I was doing so well. And then I remind them, I hone them back in and say, hang on, it's an organ. It's an organ that's responding to internal factors, manifesting itself externally. We can work together, we can decipher. But again, you need patience. Rome wasn't built in a day. This is just your skin communicating. You need to thank it for that because it's communicating to you something that's maybe imbalanced, you know? So so it's always continual. It goes back to what you were saying about it's not, you know, it's always continual. It's always changing. Um, it's not the fact that the more niche I've got and I specialize in acne and rosacea, like it's got boring or I'm doing the same thing. It actually, there's so much in it that it just becomes, the niche becomes wider and wider and wider in that niche, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I always, I always said it was like narrow, but deep, but deep, wider. It doesn't matter. It's sort of like you go through here and then it's like, wondrous (laughs) wondrous <laughs> yeah absolutely do you know what it reminds me of it reminds me of like Alice in Wonderland you know when she turns around and says curious sir and curious sir you know it's a bit like that I love that yeah oh I'm gonna use that <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you have it I'll let you have oh, it oh <laughs> thank you but how you're talking about the skin journey there it's like it's like the business journey. It's like how you're tr- how you're trying things, and some days you'll have a flare up. Yeah. And other days it's great, but yeah, the patience, and the and the speaking kindly to yourself and it. Yes. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. So what's so we're talking about doing all these exciting things, and I love it from like all the way to the <laughs> telling your auntie what's what. <laughs> to where to where you're at now where what's some audacious or not even that audacious just what's a a dream or a thought or a plan for the future for you so for me I would love to explore elementology equilibrium even more I would absolutely love to write a book about it and how that relates to skin and how people can actually use that to help themselves in their own time um skin wisdom the brand skin wisdom that i'm developing will be a line of uh, vitamin supplements for overall body health and skin um i want people to be able to help themselves from inside out even if they can't visit me but they've got a piece of ingrid by skin wisdom i really want them to be able to utilize that alongside cosmetics being formulated um i want that all to come together to become ingrid Raphael's skin wisdom sort of way to bring people equilibrium, uh, internally and externally. And, um, and I want to be able to teach that Penny. I want to be able to teach that onto other people so people can then translate that to even more people. I want to be able, you know, to reach a much wider audience and teach others. Um, and then, you know, eventually, eventually when I'm in the nursing home, (laughs) when I'm still working, doing random facials or whatever, I feel what I would love to do is I would really, really love to have a charity that helps people who really need help with their skin but can't afford it. I would just love to be able to help them. I would love to have a few people that I just see them through and just change their skin, change their life. Wow. Well, it does. It's like you say, it's it's gone from the um, 
beautifying as like as an extra to really clearing up a health condition on a massive organ <laughs> like yep. that sounded rude <laughs> maybe <it's not. laughs> Maybe take that no, bit yeah. out. <laughs> I think you should leave it. <laughs> I just heard myself. I didn't even do that on purpose. <laughs> oh, I thought God. that was fucking great. I think you should leave it in. <laughs> we were talking about such a meaningful, like, Thing. I think you should leave it on, is it? I think worthy, anyone worthy watching cost. us will know what we meant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, that was classic. Oh, well, I love you, Penny. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love you too. It's been it's been fantastic working, and <laughs> oh. um, I think if we just we'll do a little cut anyway because there's loads of laughing. But if we just do a, a thank you, Ingrid for joining oh, today pleasure. and it's been a pleasure yes same time oh, <laughs> thank you penny for all your help because you are part of my journey in honing down on my niche so thank you oh thank you <laughs>